covering all your favorite parts of the 50-yard fight. This is the Inside the Walls podcast with Zach Heilman and Jim Bernier. Welcoming you on into the latest edition of the Inside the Walls podcast. Look at this shiny new set. Hey. Look at this. Hey. We've upgraded. You, you, Jim, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you props here. You did a great job. This looks really damn good. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, well, guess what? I'm referring to our new YouTube version. We are just starting this with our first show here on episode 24, season one of Inside the Walls. We'll go to season two here pretty soon, coming closer to the 2022 NAL season. But yeah, new video version, everything. This looks great. It's crisp. Definitely check it out. Subscribe to that channel, by the way, or follow us on our socials at, at @inwallspod. Really appreciate that. Um, Jim, how you doing, man? Doing How's good. Going this? Good. Doing great. Um, a lot of big things ahead for us. Uh, we can't wait to tell everybody what's going on. Um, but right now, we're YouTube, we kind of were forced to launch it pretty soon. So, but um, I, 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 I do. I do have some stuff in the background that I would love to show you guys, but that will come down a later road. Still need to contact a couple teams in the league. Um, but still, uh, it's, it's exciting to get the YouTube version. Now you see a face to the Mr. Jack out of the box. Um, right. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it, it, it's awesome. Um, but, yeah, it's – yes, okay, I'm gonna, we're going to get questions on our, on YouTube. Why does it look like a Star Wars theme? It was not supposed to be that way. We we're trying to get the blue <laughs> stuff. We tried to design it like, you know, the nets and the goalposts, and I was like, you know, Zach, it looks like two lightsabers, and people may think this is a Star Wars podcast. No, we're here to talk about football. Yes, football season doesn't end in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. I'm tired of all of those That's memes right. already. Uh, oh, I can't wait to football season. It's been six days, people. Keys of wheeze. Um <laughs> Like, oh like we're, we're so depressed when football season ends. And I'm like, the season doesn't end. You get USFL, of course, the NAL a week after. So it's, it's exciting. Now we got the YouTube version of it. And if you listen on the podcast version, thank you. I know the phone, your phone looks good. And I guarantee we'd make it even better because you're hearing our beautiful voices, especially me. Take us anywhere. View us anyway. We have plenty of options now. And you know what? What better way to kick off our first video show with a with a with a special guest, someone that really helped kick off the audio iteration of this, somebody that you know has been getting a lot of praise, of course, from his his performances last year. But not only his performances, he's back fully into the NAL again. Going to be repping your Columbus Lions. I'm going to bring him on in here right now. It's our good buddy of the show and good, of course, good friend of the Columbus Lions and star quarterback himself, Mason Espinoza, joining us. Mason, welcome back. By the way, congrats for re-signing with Columbus. Glad to have you back in for the year. You've been getting a lot of press lately, good man, good sir. I appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you having me on. What a setup, man. You guys looking sharp here. You got to, you got to roll a little bit. We're trying. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I kind of broke my headset today. So yeah. So. <laughs> this looks like you're listening really hard in one ear. That's the key, right? You're like that ear. That's your good ear. There you go. He's uh, he's making sure no one sneaks up on him. That's why it's kind of cupped out. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <make it. laughs> he wants to wants to keep it up. So I mean, let me lock the door. <laughs> so so Mason, how, how the last few months been for you, man? I know uh, a lot of a lot of us in the community were kind of just wait. It was uh we viewed. Yourself and Darius Prince is like two big like chess pieces that we were waiting to see where you guys would go, especially after the uh, for after the Iron Man announcement. It was going to be ser- curious as to what who would come back or who would not. And uh, you know, Darius did first, and then now you're the second guy, and things are looking pretty loaded. How's the last few months been for you? What, what's what's your uh, mindset been like? No, they've been awesome. So. Uh... Kind of funny. Right after the right after the championship game in Albany, uh, I actually didn't even fly back to Georgia with the team. I got my own flight in the morning uh, because I'm an offensive coordinator at a high school in Ohio, so I had to fly back early because we had a game that next Friday night. Okay. So yeah, so I did that. Uh, I showed up in Worcester. It was uh, like the Monday before our first game on Friday. Uh, we played. Obviously, uh, we went to the third round of the playoffs, region semifinalists. So we went deep into November, man. And uh, so that that kind of block of time was took up by by coaching. Shout out Worcester High School, love you guys, miss you guys. And then uh, from then on, I got back down to Georgia and was just training and just trying to, you know, figure out what my next move was. And uh, when all things considered, man, what what a what a blessed opportunity to be back in Columbus with the Lions. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I know Jim and I were ecstatic just to get get that message from you and putting that yeah. out there. 
you know, because we've been like, I was sitting out like, feeders all week because I heard it like a, a her chirp like two weeks ago. I'm like, <laughs> let me see if Mason bites on it. Then his brother kind of bit on it. And I'm like, there's something going on here. It's like, I'm, it's like come on, Mason, jump on it. And you just like, oh, I was still working on it. I'm like, yes, like, there's something going on. I wasn't being shady. I promise there's a lot of, you know, a lot of levels, obviously, to all this stuff. And, you know, I mean, you guys have done so much for, for us in the league and then me personally, you know, with all your promotion, man, you guys deserve to have, you know, some of the some some of the hot takes around, I guess, in the arena football world. So I appreciate you guys and all you do. Well, thank you very much. I I, tell you what, well, now you're back in back in officially. You you've been seeing all the moves for teams here. Uh some shifting. A lot of a lot of pieces that were stars have shifted around. Uh, nature of the beast, of course, but now Iron Man is in play. Things are a little different. Now for yourself. You'll probably be, you'll most likely completely be a specialist. So you don't have to really worry about that. At least I hope, right? At least I hope. <laughs> I mean, no, we, you... need, we, need, we need Mason to be a jack. <laughs> I want to play one rep at nose this year. Coach Gibson, one rep. Give me one. That's all I need. <laughs> He, you, if he's listening, he better better be representing that. Put that in the contract. One, one play. <laughs> Just get a Mason's little. Mason's been jack out of the box. He doesn't even scramble. Why would he be a jack out of the box? <laughs> I just get my arms. I got long arms. I got long arms. I'm just imagine him right now. Like, dude's a statue. Why would? He... <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nah, you got mobility. You got a little mobility. I'm not going to be that guy. Uh, <laughs> how about have you have you had any talks with teammates so far on the Iron Man element since you've uh, been re-signed, or at least? during the off season? Cause uh, I mean, they got, you got to start adjusting or those have to, at least you're going to have people yeah. that are playing both sides while you're playing. Absolutely. I mean, through kind of throughout this entire process, even when I was still coaching Ohio, you know, I felt like I talked to, you know, another veteran in the league, you know, every week at some point, uh, you know, you guys know the kind of the arena football brotherhood's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you see a lot of the same faces and whether you've played against them or played with them before. So, you know, being able to talk with them a lot and, I think dudes are excited. I think that, the, you know, kind of that initial shock of the uh, – when it came out, I think was a little bit odd for people. Maybe because we just – they didn't explain it in a great way. So we didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> is everybody playing? Is no – like, what is – you know, what does that look like? But as they went through and they explained it more, and then obviously the kind of the, you know, quote-unquote recruiting process with coaches have helped because they're able to explain. Obviously, they know the rules. They have to know the rules in and out. And, you know, a vast majority of these coaches have Ironman experience in some capacity. So they're able to explain the rules a little bit more. I think it made people more comfortable, you know, knowing they're specialists, knowing, you know, at the end of the day, guys aren't going to be playing the full 60 minutes. You know, you're going to have a sub. You know, you're going to be playing about the same amount. It's just, you know, instead of all offense, you're playing offense, defense, offense, or whatever it is. And then, you know, for somebody like myself, you know, just learning more about rules for where it involves me, obviously, with receivers, with – I mean, obviously, selfishly for me, protection, you know, knowing what, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want your offensive lineman out there tired, obviously, you know, those, are, those dudes are working hard for you. You know, you want to make their life as easy as possible. So I think just becoming knowledgeable, and I think you saw that every week, more and more names from the league in the past had signed because we were getting more knowledgeable about what was going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. so do you know who the next specialist is going to be besides you? <laughs> I may have an idea, but we'll see. We'll see on uh, we'll see April twenty third. I guess can't drop all the yeah. things yeah. out there for everybody. <laughs> Got to be a little more strategic now. I, I get it's you. Right. I was trying to get free information, man. Yeah, I, I respect it, man. I respect you always. You're always at the end of the day repping your Jacksonville Sharks. I appreciate about that about you. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of bashed him last week. It's like, oh no, we were doing our rankings last week of where our teams are right now, and yeah. Zach said. Yeah, it's Columbus coming to Jacksonville in the playoffs this year. I was like, oh, yeah, Mason's coming to the Shark Tank again. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but we were nowhere near the playoffs last year. I was, was going to say, I was like you with the, the Jack, uh, the um, Iron Man rules. We, I listened, I previously listened to one of our old episodes and I just creamed the league. Like uh, me and Zach were like, yeah, that's it. We're going to the IFL. That's it. We're done with this. This is not going to last. And as it progressed and I'm once to find all the new rules, I'm looking at like, oh, it's, it's a lot of subs. There's more subs in this version than it was in the mm -hmm. last game. So, so it is. And like I've I've sat back and I've actually talked to other players and like yeah, that's that's the reason I'm playing is because I I'm knowing I'm gonna get a guaranteed amount of playing time and I have a guaranteed amount of off the field action. So yeah, absolutely. And I think a big thing too that like you know as we go along this we kind of understand. I think you even alluded to it on your last episode was that like 
it's still a 21-man roster. I think back in the day in the AFL when they did Ironman, they were like 16, 17, 18, 19. Like, they did not have a lot. There's still a lot of players, so, you know, on a roster. So, you know, there's – it's not, you know, we're not working people to death. It's just a different style of playing. I mean, maybe it even speeds up the game. I mean, at the end of the day, unless, you unless you know, it's a mass – it's either going to be like a hockey line sub where everyone comes in, everyone comes off, or two specials come on, two specials come off. It's one of the two. So maybe that speeds up the game a little bit too, which is, you know, probably a fortunate byproduct. I'm glad you brought that up. That is the best way I've been able to either talk to people on describing it as of late is it does come off as hockey. If you are going to have a substitution period, or at least coaches have to then schedule out when they feel they need to get players off and who are dead for a certain period of time. That's a whole new ball game that you'll have to understand. I think, uh, you know, you talked about the leagues under trying to get it out across the fans. I think they're going to have to, and I hope they do this, Mm -hmm. that they do a better, I would say, synopsis of the rules once more before we get back into this. Because it's been a few months since the initial announcement. And you're going to probably have to see some teams explaining how this works or yeah. if you can get some production, a tutorial video would be great. For right. That's what I, I, I was just thinking that. Like, I remember the old AFL used to have, like, I remember I have the old, like, PlayStation 2 Arena video game. Yeah. And even there they have, like, a tutorial, like, Arena Football 101. Like, what's Iron Man? It's like, okay, maybe that's cool. Like, maybe even blast that, you know, to start your broadcast or something, like, um, before a game or something. You never know who's watching stuff. So. Who knows, man? But yeah, you're you're 100 right. I think another, you know, comb over the rules would be good for everyone. And and also, we already have coaches in the league that have experience because Jeff Higgins for the Orlando yeah. Predators played Ironman football. Yeah. So he knows the rules. He said the rules are a little tweaked because this is the new era of Ironman, yeah. but it's same concept. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of them did. Uh, like you said, coach there. I think Coach Burley. You know, I think talking to him. I think he. I think he might have played in it. Uh, I know Coach Gibson has both played and coached in it. You know, so, I mean, that's just off the top of my head. That's half the league's coaches right there. I, I don't know the backgrounds of the other coaches quite as well, but I'm sure at some point if you've been involved in arena football before 2007 or whatever it is, you've dabbled in Ironman in some capacity. A little bit. <laughs> Steering away from Ironman, I kind of kind of want to bring up your, yourself here, um, just or something that maybe personal experience. You ever been to uh, San Antonio? You got a new destination to go to this year. Yeah, uh, no. Something out in New Jersey. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, I, I no offense to, you know, our brethren up in the Trenton area, but I'm much more excited to go to San Antonio than Trenton, New Jersey. But uh, no, I've never been to San Antonio, uh, been to Texas, you know, once or twice or whatever. We play, I think, way back the first year of the NAL, Corpus Christi had a team. We were, uh, yeah. They were yeah, we went there and Rampage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, they're, don't oh, give me man, it was, it was, uh, there's a, there's been a lot of a lot of iterations in the National League. Really. This is the best one by far. So another one I'm really excited about. Crazy enough, I've never played at Orlando. Never been to Orlando's arena. I know there's very few places I've never played at, but I'd never. That's right, been. you played last year. You were both home against them. That's, both that's home true. In 19. That's right. I was in Albany, you know, in the other league, and then they weren't in the league in 18. So I've never been to the Amway Center to play. So I'm excited for that. That's right. I didn't think about that. You're going to go to the other jungle. Yeah. I find that I find that hilarious. Now there's people you got you got a, both communities that are like, don't you mean like Columbus little fans will post the jungle like, don't you mean Orlando? And then they'll get cheeky with each other. It's like ah, well, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> ours is better. Have, you guys can correct me on this. I thought they used to have a trophy. Like we won last year, and I'm like, oh, don't we get like a like a trophy or a it's like a knife or something? Like I remember. Back in that first year, Orlando was playing. It was like it was something cool, and I was like, "Oh, that's sweet." And then it just never showed back up again. If they, Do some research on it. Go back to 2019, Week One, Columbus and Orlando. I guarantee they had some kind of rivalry trophy. We have to do some job. research on that for that, sure. That could be old management too, and that management's no longer associated with the league. Uh, I'm like saying, hey, but I'm telling you, you know, Mr. Cheney, there better get better get on the horn. I. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Like we've we've talked rivalries on the show in the past. So. There's only one rivalry in the NL. That's Columbus make and more, make some more. Then you know what, Jim? <laughs> I love that you said that. I love how we're doing the geographical stuff in the Columbus, Carolina, and Jacksonville, Orlando. At the end of the day, when Jacksonville and Columbus get on the field against each other, it's just it's just different. It just is. I mean, I mean, we'll play four yeah. times this year, Mason. We'll play each other four times this year. I can't, and saying. I can't wait for every one of them. Every time you guys come to Columbus, every time we go to Jacksonville, it is my favorite week of the year. Just the intensity, and you know, even the short 
you know, time that we've played against each other from 2017 on, there's been yeah. so many good football games, and it's just – it's a lot and, of um, – Yeah, not you know, last year, though. Last year. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it wasn't fun. It was a funny – People you know, know, like like the the Jacksonville fans, they get it, man. Like, oh yeah, we, we, we were there. I was there. You guys turned out, man. So that you know, it's it's a it's a it's my funnest play, funnest away trip in the league is Jacksonville. And, and what's what's cool about Jacksonville? There was eight thousand fans there, and we were losing by thirty. <laughs> I'm like, they really believe. Here. I'm like, there's Mason just sitting in the pocket, and no one's touching him. Oh, there's Antoine. Grant. This game is over. No one's leaving because our because our announcer, uh, Jackson, who's good at his job, is like, yeah. get loud, Jax for Sark's fan. I look at the scoreboard. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like there's five <laughs> minutes left. We're losing by thirty some points. And I'm like, okay, Thundersticks, whatever. Like, give me uh, a beer. Like this game is done. Bit. It's so yeah. much fun though. You guys do it right. It's a party. Uh, my, every time we yeah. play in Jacksonville, first trip of the year, my entire family comes down. They don't miss that game. Uh, last year, my girlfriend, and my mom came together. My dad, and my little brother came together, and that was it. Was it was a lot of fun. That's good. well. Hey, and you're gonna this year. I mean, pending. I know last year injuries kind of derailed a little bit with with Faithful going out there at the week one against the Predators. But yeah. you know, pending. I mean. Jacksonville reloaded. Carolina definitely said this year, we're not waiting around. We're going to load up early to get talent. You know, um, <laughs> we've, we've said this year, the league with Iron Man is probably at least primed to be the most competitive that we have seen it, at least off the top of our heads for the first four, now five seasons coming in. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of people now that I think you can make an argument, go to, get to the crown or the championship this year last year it really felt like it was you guys in albany this year I'm, we're all looking at the initial rosters and going uh what i'm just saying it was just them. They dominated everyone. I, I mean look i i think i think that some things change but yeah. now it definitely feels like it's kind of a toss-up to me more you know it, there's yeah. a lot more Between variables this, this year at play. yeah i mean and you're you're 100 right you know this year i mean Jacksonville last year, you know, Jim jokes around the whole thing, but still, like, they lost their quarterback, like, week one, like, game one of the year. Was it week two? Yeah, I mean, no, we, lost, one, we, yeah. Lost, we lost Faithful week one, then um, Roadbrick, um, uh, some Roadbrick, I think his name was. Yeah. He went down week two. That. They had to sign yeah. Connor Kagey, and he came in and completely imploded because he's a rookie right yeah. out of freaking college. Oh, man. And then mm -hmm. legend himself, Danny Southwood, gave us a little bit of hope. <laughs> and he beats Albany, or like, what the heck just happened here? Yeah. And then this year yeah. just – I mean, Jonathan Bain happened. to end it, you know? <laughs> you know, hey, Mike, what's another one? What's you're another? right. Like, and, and I don't know I don't know Mike. I've, you know, I've heard a lot about him. Obviously, I wish I would have got to play against him last year. Uh, I mean, the, the dude's the real deal. You know, you obviously, they built that team around him. Obviously, you built your team around your quarterback. Mm -hmm. When you lose someone, when you lose the guy you built around, it's, it's going to be a tough season. It just is. There's not a lot of arena quarterbacks out there that are trained in arena. You know, this year, like, that's what I'm so proud of, of, of this league in general is the talent that we have top to bottom. And, like, especially at the quarterback position, man, like, even you look at last year, but even look at this year, like, dude, I mean, Mike, like we talked about up in Albany is the real deal. Jonathan Bain, dude, I've been playing against that guy for forever. He's the real deal. Warren's obviously the real deal. I mean, I'm not leaving anyone out, but, like, dude, top to bottom, you're not going to see any slouches. Like, you're going to go in, you're going to see court, good quarterbacks every week. With and everyone else to figure out how to play two way, so it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. And quality backups. Jacksonville has Malik Henry. Uh, Jonathan Bain has no, no Castro Nova is in Albany. Yeah, and I mean, guys so, have started games in arena before as yeah. your backup. That's that's tough to do. Yeah, it, 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 he played in Carolina last year, which was kind of difficult because he yeah. got the you know the terrible turnover bug, and that just wouldn't leave him. And in the short season, that kills your, that could kill your season. Um, but yeah, if you look at it over overall, the quarterbacks in the league, I'm I, like for me last week. If you listen to my past show, I was like, "All oh, right, well, Warren Smith is Jacksonville. It's done." Then Mason hits. I'm like, "God, man, <laughs> like, like what the heck?" <laughs> uh, uh, but, awesome, I'm excited. Yeah, you got Bain. You got um, Bayful. It's just yeah. and Hilliard down in Hilliard and Cato yeah. both down in Orlando. I don't know how that's going to sort out, but like I, you know, obviously if you like arena, you know, you watch. If there's an indoor game on, whether it's your rules or not, you watch Hilliard's. He had a great career out in the IFL. You know, Cato is – I remember watching him when he was in college, slinging around for Marshall. So, they got two legit guys. Yeah. You know, I'm not as familiar with San Antonio's roster yet. I'm going to have to comb that over a little bit more. But 
I mean, they've, they've had some success. They're going to have guys, especially in the Texas area, that's all they do is throw the ball around out there just constantly. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Well, Cato, I've known him from the most famous comeback in the, I think it's the Papa, the, like Popeye's Bowl down in the Bahamas. <laughs> where he, that. <laughs> he had like a 24-point comeback against, I think, like Eastern Michigan or something. And it was just a random Thursday night or Thursday afternoon, <laughs> first bowl game of the season. I'm like, I'm going to just watch this and, like, who's this kid Cato? I've never even seen this guy and came back and won bowl game. I'm like, oh, well, then I see him on the transaction bar. I'm like, is that Cato from Marshall Cato? And I go, like, oh, yeah, I already know this guy. It's like, <laughs> only watch one game. Yeah, there we go. That's it, man. That's <laughs> I only watch one game and I know him already. I'm like, yeah, I think he's going to be good. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to bring this up here because uh, Jim, Jim put a lot of nice effort into this. Let's see. Do you think, I assume with the new schedule, possibly. Can you match your stats from last year? This is what we got from last year's here. Oh, look at the graphic. Oh, man, you guys are getting fancy. Say, Jim Jim puts a lot of effort into these things. I'm telling you right now. By the way, if you're listening to this again on podcast, this is on YouTube. You should uh, check that out. But, yeah, Career look at this. Career stats, Zach. Career stats, not. Still, still. This is, yeah. Wow, still. fancy. Here's what I'll tell you, fellas. I love stats. Of course, stats, you know, you know, do do what they do. But my, my favorite stat is the win column. Right. There so you go. as long as as long as our win column surpasses what we had last year and we win the one that counts at the end, then I'll be happy. Well, I just want to say about your career stats, Mason. You are exactly seven touchdowns away from being the all time in AL passing touchdown quarterback, whatever. Okay. And you're as and literally you're gonna break the all time passing record with maybe three completions. Uh <laughs> if that if that gives you forty six yards. Okay. <laughs> so, so you'll have go, yeah. Like you'll have a tweet when you come back in your first game of the season, like Mason's uh, all time leading passer with NAL, and it's because you just completed three passes for like 56 yards, something like that. It's you're, <laughs> you're literally right there. And the inter and the interceptions, you're not in the top 40, so you're pretty good there. Because that, uh, that, feel, that feels good. That's a good, I guess, a good ratio, you know. So who knows? Uh, <laughs> that's good. You, you have more touchdowns. You throw interceptions. That means you have a job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, man, yeah. this season, <laughs> you know. A little extra nugget we could put in with it. this, of course. Yeah. Nice little touches. And but, I couldn't get the win totals because the one thing about the NAL website, and hopefully they fix this, is they don't tell who started the game. It just says mm. who the passing the quarterback and who your backup was at the time. I think it was, was Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald last year? No, not Fitzgerald. It just last shows your – Or boy, Chase. Chase. Yeah. Okay. Shout out um, Chase. He's listening. He's the man. Um, yeah, it just shows your name. It doesn't tell you. It says games played, but it doesn't tell you started. And so I couldn't say, did Mason win this game? Or look, because I was going to put your record there. Uh, but you go down to 2017, the start of the NAL stats were just god awful. Like, yeah. yeah, it was terrible to find your win total. So I was like, eh, this is going to be kind of difficult. And so, then I got hurt at the end of 18. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I can see how that'd be a little confusing mm -hmm. there. Could feel you there. Yeah. yeah. So here's, I want to bring this up as we're talking the Lions a little bit. How's, uh, how how was getting a film crew following you around last year with it with inside the lines we've been uh the new sh the new one's actually dropping a little in a little bit here as we're recording so yeah. that uh i mean the first episode blew us away uh aiden did a great and his crew did a great job putting that together <laughs> thor <laughs> sorry that was the best part of the whole series show it, it, it was and like you know I, i'll take a second to brag on aiden here like what a guy he really like he went from you know, very, very quickly, he went from camera guy, who's this guy following us around, to, like, one of the guys. Like, he was part of the team at the end of the year. Like, we cared about that dude. And I think that's a testament to him, the professionalism he had, and, you know, the trust. You know, I, you know, I love Coach Gibson. He, he, uh, Coach Gibson loves having, having his hands, loves having his control. The fact that he can turn that over to Aiden and trust, you know, kind of what he's put together in his vision, I think it's a testament to him. And, I mean, he's done an unbelievable job. I've seen – uh Obviously, the first episode. I've seen just a couple rough clips of uh, action from the from the from his camera because he was okay. on the field during the game. Like he was in the huddle sometimes. He was right behind. And I think as the year went on, he got more comfortable with arena football of like where to stand where he wouldn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I think as we go on this season, you're going to be able to see like he's going to be in the action. It's some it's some really cool shots. You're going to hear some conversations that. Uh, you know, may probably make Coach Gibson cringe a little, a little bit, give, kind of giving away, giving away what we're talking about before the play and stuff. But what an unbelievable job by that guy, and what an unbelievable team. I mean, that 2020, you know, one team, it was, it was, they were special. 
They really were. It was uh, the most fun I've had playing professional football. Uh, everybody from, you know, every, every guy we brought in to the, you know, the guy that was the Marvin Ross, the guys on the roster day one, you know, kind of leading the defense. Everybody, everyone, you know, just came together and just had this this real special camaraderie and you knew it uh, pretty early. So those are rare to get and you got you to cherish those. And I'm really glad we got to capture that season because that'll that'll something I want to I remember a long time. See, I, I love that because I, when watch when the final year of the AFL, uh, Ben Fraternale, shout out to him by the way, he did a, yeah. he was an excellent excellent job of covering the league, yeah. following with Albany and a few other teams. And I miss that aspect with the sport. I feel like that's something that needs to be back. So like Aiden to me filled that role really mm-hmm. well of just kind of getting in and kind of showing the story of the of this sport again. Absolutely. And I you know I think that that's something that's been missing in all leagues. I haven't really seen that until this year with that documentary and we're not even done with it. You know, see episode oh. two, there's like another two or three episodes. I understand they're supposed to be dropping with it. So we'll get the whole story. And I love the first one. You get all the uh, personality. I didn't know about the talent shows. So that was great to learn about that. That was, that was funny. <laughs> that, was, that was like one of my favorite parts of that for that first episode was like, yeah, so we got a talent show for the newcomers. They got a, <laughs> you know, we need to they, we show off in the locker room. <laughs> oh, it's so, much fun. It's but, so much fun. We were a little bit worried about not being able to do it because of, how quickly we have, you know, normally you have plenty of time to plan for this. Uh, but, you know, last year with the Albany and Ontario stuff, and you know, we were, you know, there's dudes, you know, we've had in the building for three days that we're about to leave to go to Albany. And uh, we were just like, coach, we got to do it. Like the vets were like, we just got to do it. And uh, I really think it was, you know, it's, it's a big deal to kind of see people get out of their shell a little bit. It kind of, it somewhat forces you out of your shell and, it just it brings you together, and it was man, it was it's so much fun. It's my favorite time of year. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's a blast. I yeah, the uh, the characterization of people is great. Like like another one, uh, Lonnie Outlaw is just like he's so <laughs> hilarious. I did not I did not realize the guy's a goof in practice like he is. But oh my god, that was like one of my favorite parts well, of that there, first show too. There is there is a special scene in there where Mason is being the holder. And he, he's not catching on the football. And he's like, he gets up. He's like, oh, my knees are getting too old. I, I got to retire from this game. <laughs> hey, hey, you take over, man. He walks over to his side. He's like, man, my knees are getting I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that. I was just like, when I saw that, when I'm like, I, that scene just made me laugh. I'm like, okay, here, old timer here. Like, I'm going to retire because I can't hold a snap from my freaking game. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the, yeah, it's one of those. I appreciate you, Chase. Miss you, man. You know, pre- appreciate you. Appreciate you filling in there when you know I forgot how to catch a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. We had such great personalities on the team. Lonnie, dude, Lonnie's one of my favorite guys, man. I, I hope you know whatever. I know he's with Orlando this year. Whatever you know in football and outside of football, you know, comes his way. That dude's more than deserving. He's an he's an unbelievable guy and. Uh, you know, it's it's no secret that he was six eight, and he was somewhat the focal point of our offense as we as we got comfortable, you know, with each other. You know, his size became such the focal point of of what we were doing, and the most unselfish team guy in the world. I mean, we would get inside the ten yard line or the five yard line where his six eight would be a problem for teams, and you start getting true double teams and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that reflected, you know, kind of later in the year. I think his his stats dropped just a little bit because teams were double teaming. It wasn't him. The teams were double teaming him, and he was, he was like, "No, dude, like get." The, it's like, man, this guy's open. This guy's open. Get it to him. You know, it's very rarely you see top level receivers with that mentality. And Lonnie was was every bit of that. So I'm I'm really uh, blessed to be able to know him and call him a friend and play with him. It's all about the wins. Anything uh, you can think of from the because the start of episode two is going to be when you guys go to Albany. Is there anything you think will show up on the camera that you'll be like, ah? Okay, I didn't remember that, but now, but now yeah, that, it's coming back to me. <laughs> pretty much the entire first episode. Uh, no, that, I mean that was that's kind of what it is. You almost you forget he's there. He's so you know Aiden does such a great job. You forget he's there, and he's also there a lot of the times without his camera. I mean he's there all the time, you know. So sometimes he'll just be there, and you're in a moment, and you're hanging out, or you're doing whatever, and he just like sneaks his camera up, and you don't even notice he does it. So I'm I have no clue what he got, but there's going to be some moments that. Uh, is going to be funny. Top of my head, I don't, I don't know when it's coming up, but when Felipe, our, you know, our international player, uh, had to be our kicker, you know, kind of, kind of impromptu. That's going to be a hilarious moment. Some of the bus rides are going to be hilarious moments. Oh uh, my gosh! Yes, we went up to I can't even remember what it was. It might have been Albany, 
I know. I can't remember where it was. Now, actually, it might have been that first trip to Auburn, or maybe it was Trenton. Our guys, we were on two separate flights, and you'll see it. Uh, our our linemen, pretty much, who were on the late flight, got all their stuff locked in the trunk of a car <laughs> at the airport. Like the car got stuck. So they're like breaking in their own car to get their stuff to make this fly. It's gonna, it's and, and Aiden was with them the whole time. So it's gonna be an absolute comedy fest. I cannot wait. We already have talked with Aiden. We're gonna have him on the show. So this is a great primer to get some of these pieces. Yeah, you'll get some good stuff from him. He's a, he's a great dude. He's a really sharp dude. He's he's a, he's fun to talk to. <laughs> well, that, I talent, will say, that talent show is what sold it all. You got it did. <laughs> Guy walks in dressing like Thor, speaking a freaking line from the Avengers, oh. and they show Mason Espinosa, and he's dressed in a costume of just full ice, <laughs> just over there, <laughs> like ice on the shoulder, ice on the knee, and ice I everywhere. Told you, man, these knees are getting old. I said it. I said it earlier in the episode. These knees are getting old, man. I, you know, but uh, like the episode was good. I was like, man, this is pretty good. And um, I forgot who Thor was. Uh, he comes it's in, and starts like, off. he's like. Yeah. A, <laughs> You happen to land on the carpet enough, yeah. yeah I mean, like, you probably do need a bit more ice. <laughs> I'm here to prevent Ragnarok. I'm like, this guy's doing the whole th- the scene from Ragnarok. <laughs> He's bored. I'm just laughing my ass off. Excuse my so Dobbs, so the backstory, or not really the backstory, but so Dobbs played at uh, he played at Vanderbilt. And he had a couple, he had a couple touchdowns for us this year. He was like kind of our glue guy. He did everything. He was the backup Jack. He even played some backup fullback. He did a little bit of everything. He went to Vanderbilt, and he was like a. Uh, you, Dobbs, you got to forgive me. He was like a music actor, video type guy. Like, that's what he does. And I think, you know, he ha- has something, you know, I talked to him a little bit and even he couldn't tell me, but he has something big coming up in the works of like acting, music, something going on. He was, uh, he was very heavily involved in the Kurt Warner movie. Like he was like, Oh yeah. The linebacker. Oh, yeah. If you ever see a guy with like the long curly hair, that was him. And he was like very, very heavily involved in that. And so that's kind of what he does. And, and uh, as you could tell, he's really good at it. So I'm excited. Even if his future's away from, you know, professional football, I'm excited to see where that guy, you know, kind of kind of goes because he's he's a great dude and he's he's really good at kind of that acting music type type realm. Wow. Well, Mason, we want to say thanks for joining us here for really for this episode. It's been a blast. I uh, wanted to give you a last chance here. I mean, like I said, people have been excited that you're back. Um, I know you already locally have put in kind of like kind of like your own like pump pump primer, like let's go, let's get at it. 22 se- 2022 season is going to be here sooner than you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your, what's your message here for fans before we uh, conclude, conclude our conversation with you? I mean, there, you know, a, a couple things, you know, I guess to, to the teammates, my guys that have already signed, you know, I'm, you know, I, I can't wait to get to work with them. I think coach has done an unbelievable job of bringing in uh, a, a great mix of, you know, veteran presence, rookie talent, like, I'm really, really excited about how our roster is shaped up this year. To the fans, man, let's, let's, let's strap it up and let's go. I mean, we, we, this is the odd year where, as a player, we're kind of learning with you. I mean, we don't, you know, we know the rules at a base level, but we're really trusting coaches and, you know, what they're going to bring to us. And, you know, it, I got a feeling that the first couple weeks is going to be everyone, you know, with their own interpretation of the rules, different specialists, different all this stuff. And then probably by week, you know, four or five, everyone's probably going to be doing the same thing because somebody's going to have the right formula, you know, and, and it's going to be who has the right formula, who figured it out first. They're probably going to have a jump in the standings and then everyone's going to kind of figure it out from there. So I think it's going to be a really fun first couple of weeks and a really fun season. A lot of parity, so much talent dispersed so evenly. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Nice. And also no COVID restrictions in Columbus this year. So massive. So there'd be more than 2,000 fans in the arena, which was holding you guys back last year was those restrictions. So now there's none. So, so excited. So excited about that. There'd be more fans in the stands. Absolutely. And that's, and, that, and that's our job here to promote it, get more fans in the stands, because you know what? We're trying to push for it. So um, I, I was yeah. going to ask you a question. It's just completely like it flew over <laughs> me. Like it's uh, – <laughs> Save it for next time, maybe? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I'll, I'll, knowing me, I'll think of it like literally five minutes after the episode ends. I'll be like, oh, well, yeah, that's what we'll we'll DM. Text me, read it out loud. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll DM you, you mid-show here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mason, we're looking forward to seeing you in play again. It's coming right sooner than you think. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, 
hopefully to hopefully look at get you another MVP season underway. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I'm really excited, man. I'm excited for, for the team we got. And, you know, again, guys, thank you for all you're doing. I mean, you're you're doing an unbelievable job pushing the game forward. Players love this, man. We love the professionalism. We love that, you know, kind of that media push, you know, because it's important to us at the end of the day. I mean, we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't important to us. So we appreciate all you guys do, man. And, you know, just I'm excited to see what you got in store. I'm not, you know, give away secrets, but I'm really, really excited to see what you guys have on the horizon. Really excited. Well, thank you. That, that means Appreciate a lot. It. And we're looking forward to the loaded, like it's a season that's fully loaded again. Yeah. You know, that, that's what's going to be great for all these teams. Fully loaded. The jungle in Georgia, at least, will, <laughs> will be packed up, much like the one in Amway was looking to appear back last year. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Mason, take care. We'll catch you another time because I know we'll have you back on this show at this point <laughs> at this point anymore. And we love, love this conversation. Have a great one, man. I appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it, so much. See you later. Yeah, man. What what a great convo! I I always love having him on the show. You know, it's it, he, I mean, you can't. I mean, dude always always has plenty of stuff and insight. You know that he's able yeah. to provide. It's Mason freaking Espinoza. <laughs> well, That's what it. Else we have to add. What else <laughs> we have to add. <laughs> the guy is genuine. That's one thing I love about the Arena League. Everybody in this league is accessible. Everybody understands. They know that they've gone through the trials and tribulations to achieve their dream. And for yeah. them to share their story, they want to share it because to the thousands and millions of high schoolers who are per- trying to pursue a football career, the only thing they think is NFL or bust mm-hmm. or D1 or bust. It's like there's NA- NAIA, there's Division Two, II, Division Three, Division Four. There's so many divisions in college, and then there's so many different different sports or different divisions in professional sports, NAL, IFL. Uh, MLFA, XFL, USFL, Canadian. Um, and hearing stories like from Mason is honestly, you, you get the behind the scenes look of, the, of these teams. Sure. Of these, and also these personalities that are in these leagues. And it just makes you wonder like, only if the NFL can do this, a lot of fans would appreciate more of the players in the NFL, but the NFL is big money. And you talk to them, you got to spend money to talk to them. And, but at least with here in the NAL, you get the stories for these guys to come through, the trials and tribulations they've gone through to even get to this point. And a lot of these players fall in love with the game, and mm-hmm. they fall in love with the arena game. And that's why you see of all the teams in the NAL, you see familiar faces year in and year out because they don't want to pursue the NFL because they know they have a good, stable career in the NAL or they have other professional careers outside of sport that they can still play their dream. but. Mason, same as Antoine Grant, same as, you know, Brian Hicks, same as Danny, especially Danny Southwick. Danny freaking Southwick is a legend. The guy just played a ring, period. Um, you can have a sustainable career, and there's other options in lower-level football or alternate-level football, excuse me. But for Mason, look at his stats, look at his career, from, from Erie Storm to the Columbus Lions to the Albany Empire – the guy loves the game, and he's honestly one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the arena game. And the only reason why he won't be Casera as one of the greatest is because the AFL is not around, and that's stupid because there's great quarterbacks in the other arena leagues, especially in the NL. We have four of them, and last year we had two of the greatest, to ever, two of the greatest to ever play, especially Tommy Grady. But Mason is in that conversation, especially with his performance in the National Arena League over the last four years. Yeah. He's been great. And you know what? It, opportunities keep rising up abound. You know, we're, uh, yeah. I, I, it's kind of transition, but, you know, the USFL has kind of made a presence. It has a few, there's already been a few people that are from these leagues that have made it in. Uh, and at least in the draft pool, Patrick O'Brien's one of them from mm-hmm. the Predators. He is going to be in there as well. Uh, Travion Shorts from yep. the Empire, he'll be in. And now we have to talk about what was supposed to be news about one specific star that we were curious if he would sign. He did. Now it's a little bit, I wouldn't call confuddled, but you know, there's another avenue that's opened up. So if you've been uh, seeing the new crawl that we have on here, uh, you can tell that we are going to talk about Antoine Grant. Antoine Grant, as we were recording this, I'm not joking you. He kind of informed, he informed us and we announced that he has signed a USFL draft contract. So essentially that draft is coming up Tuesday, February 22nd and 23rd. So, and he also, there's a supplemental draft coming up March 10th. So 
he is eligible now to be in any stages of that draft for the USFL. And if he is picked up, odds are he is most likely going to play there. Now, that's not saying that it's not guaranteed. Drafts are never guaranteed, but Antoine's very talented. So we have high hopes that he will be picked up by a team. And if he's not, here's how this will work. I mean, Albany still has that contract. So he still has, Albany still has rights. Yeah, the fallback will be he, his rights will go back to Albany. He will yeah. be in Albany. But the USFL, as we know, it is the next step. It is a, I will argue as much as I love this league, it is a higher opportunity to get to the NFL level. As we know, players are moving up that scale at times. So it's an outdoor that is game. now at play. It's the outdoor game. That's the only, that's for the NFL. They look like, well, they look at, for instance, go back to the XFL just two years ago. Yeah. PJ Walker. He's now a backup in Carolina. Mm-hmm. He would never get that chance in Carolina if he didn't show out in the Houston uh, Rough Riders. Are we even allowed to say rough riders? Are we going to get rough, rough, rough necks is what it rough meant. Now. But yeah, yeah I get what you're saying. Rough, but still, you know, there's a talk. <laughs> but the tight end that um, was it farmer for the, the Dallas Renegades went to San Diego and he turned out to be one of the better tight ends on fancy in the Donald, NFL this year. Donald Parham, who Parham, is, yeah. made his own opportunity. You know, that's, the USFL that's is it. a great opportunity for a lot of these players. We know one personally, Aaron Ellis, who is from the European League of Football and also played in Denmark. He's in the draft pool as well. He's a decent quarter. He's a good quarterback. I think he should be in the league. Uh, he has the skills. And now we've, because of how we branched this show and your show, the Great Iron Gallery, we have reached all, a lot of these other communities. And we know these people now who are getting, like Antoine Grant is one. Uh, I think Prince Shinola is the other one from Orlando that's now. Uh, yeah, actually he did. Uh, he is also in, because he left, he was originally signed to Albany. Funny enough how that works. And then uh, he kind of did the same thing with David Pindell, actually. We can talk about him too. Uh, similar deal, had an NAL contract, also funny enough with Albany. Um, both of them went to IFL teams and signed contracts. Now, they're both also in the draft pool, which, again, to be in the official draft pool, you first have to apply. Then you had to get a contract sent to you saying that you are eligible to be drafted. Like, essentially, it's the player's contract. If you're drafted, that contract applies to you, the person, in that league. So that's essentially where Antoine's at and several of these other players are right now. And, you know, that status is kind of in limbo for those leagues. Luckily, that'll be figured out before the, most of the seasons yeah, start. Yeah. For the NAL, it's easier. They get to wait till the 23rd. They have time. You know, if you're talking like IFL contracts, eh, now we got to, now it's a little more up in the air. I mean, but I mean, they can join me. Nonetheless, like that's where the status is. You're right. Just like yeah, Jim said, you, it's you your have, rights. You, you have more experience about the USFL because you do have one of the most pop. Honestly, you have the most popular USFL podcast out there with, uh, uh the ref over at oh, the stop, USFL. Stop, make me blush. <laughs> stop, man. Stop, make me blush. Um, but yeah, but like you see thousands of, especially millions of fans out there. We all know them, especially because we cover the national arena league and we love arena football. Yeah. Oh, I call football season's over. We got to wait. I saw one tweet. We're 100 days away to be 100 days away from the NFL season. So basically, you're, you're like 200 days. Like, come on. Like, yes, we know the NFL's over. It's only been literally like six days since the NFL's yeah. been over. And I don't know, more than it's not, it's we're already Monday. So we're a week and a week away, a uh, week past. It's just the USFL, in my opinion, for me, going to spring stock. Can't wait. Uh, this podcast is going to spring stock because we're yeah, both will. going. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> um, most likely we'll do an episode like this at a hotel or something to preview because the following week is the freaking season of the NAL. So we'll get we'll keep you guys uh, informed. But one thing I do love about the USFL is like when I fell in love with the XFL, football. I love football. Yeah, but football on TV, I'll watch it. I'll watch the IFL, even though I like the rules, I'll watch it. Uh, the CIF, same way. The NAL just reminds me of the Arena Football League more. But I'll watch the CFL when it's on. I'll watch the XFL when it was on. And it's football. And I get irritated when I see people out there go, oh, I can't wait 200 days until football season. Yeah, we know. We, we know NFL is 200 days away. We understand. But there are other athletes out there in these leagues that are damn capable of being in the NFL roster. It's just oh, yeah. that the NFL rosters are the elite of the elite. And these players are just as good. They just one second too slow or they're one second short, uh, one second too slow on that cut route, or they can block. They can't block for that second. That's the difference. These are good at good athletes. The question I have for you about 
the old spectrum of the USFL, because this is your your knowledge, okay. is the uniqueness of the draft. Two days. It's not like the NFL where um, linebacker goes number two, fullback goes number five, whatever. There's never a linebacker and a fullback no. in the first round in the NFL draft. Maybe the last time that's ever happened is like the 1970s or something like that. <laughs> um, but first round is quarterbacks, and the second round is like receiver. It's like a uniqueness. It's like each yeah. round is a different position. Well, second round's defensive ends. So they're, they go – so think about it that way. Like Wow. Well, I mean, my the logic there is – quarterbacks are an essential for they're your central for your, running your offense Any, you know defensive anyway, ends yeah. what's the best way to shut down a quarterback get to the quarterback the you're drafting linebacker. basically your pass rushers at that point so that that's that's the whole logic of it you know and really for the usfl draft like you know and in, in terms of arena like tying it back to N, the nal like mm-hmm. it's it's just another element like another avenue um do arena leagues have to you know maybe lose out on those that choose the upper hand i mean they kind of do, but this is kind of, this is almost expected, I think, at this point. If there's an outdoor opportunity, you know, talk both of us to talk to players. Outdoor opportunities generally, at least in the, current, the in the current arena atmosphere. We're not talking yeah. AFL atmosphere where you're being paid, where you're having some competitive pay at that point mm-hmm. with even like the CFL at one point. No, like this is a different post-2019, it's been different. So if you have an opportunity to go CFL, USFL, even XFL is coming up next year, MLFB, yeah. which maybe, maybe not at this point, who the hell knows? Correct. You know, that those are things people look at, you know. Um, now that and that might be changed. The NAL, I know, changed like no cap this year. You know, a lot of yeah. people have had conversations on that. Pay can be determined differently depending on the situation, well, you know. The no the no cap was uh, honestly in my opinion, it was a good idea for the NAL because they can negotiate contracts more than compared to the last year because last year they were restricted on a lot of things. That's true. And for them to survive and compete, just not just in the arena level, to compete with the XFL and the USFL if the USFL does have a second season, that's still the big question mark with those leagues, uh, especially with the NAL. Like, there's question marks in every league. You have to have owners, and no matter what league it in is in, to pay up. And for the NAL, they did that first step. And for them to get the quality talent that they already got back for all these six franchises tells you that the NAL is financially stable for mm-hmm. uh, from what we came through from last season, the COVID. And I know a lot of fans out there over the last couple of seasons have especially bashed this podcast and bashed me on Twitter saying, You're, well, we should have had – or we already had expansion teams coming. There's, there's expansion teams coming. It's inevitable. Um, but when you are sustained six teams and you have six solid franchises, five of which have returned from this season, one from San Antonio, which has had a was the basically the best franchise AL ever had yep. last year. Um, they they outdrew arenas with a with a cow pasture in San Antonio. It means they 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 did something very well in San Antonio. Right. And they're, and they're doing a massive upgrade to the Alamo Dome. Maybe, maybe, um, yeah. We just yeah. <laughs> seriously, we gotta still waiting on that, you know. But one thing I just gotta mention is the overall landscape of football in the spring is competitive, no matter where, because these leagues will be comp- competing with top level players. And back in the early two thousands, you only had the Arena Football League. That was the only thing, and you had you know prime time on NBC. Um, so many years, you had Bon Jovi and John Elway fighting in the freaking house in the commercial for the, oh, the football days. days. Um, so you had Matt Bonner, you had Aaron Garcia. You, so you had all these players, and the AFL exceeded and, and it was very successful. The XFL, of course, 2001. <laughs> XFL, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, right. We, we have announcers fighting coaches on the sidelines. That um, just in <laughs> that era, that, that's when it goes south. Um, but, hey, I'm an XFL. I love the original XFL. Uh, I still do. It had a lot of potential. It found, great, it found great cities to have spring football. Birmingham, Orlando were very successful. L.A., Coliseum, too big again. Same thing with the Super Bowl, like. There are more Bengal fans in the stadium than Super Rams fans. <laughs> right. um, and it's their own building. Like, come on. Um, but overall, the health of spring football is getting stronger. And we have a – it was on that small fan base a couple years ago with the XFL. And it's getting stronger now. The USFL is getting a big traction, especially in Michigan, I see. Especially, I think, New Orleans just broke 10,000 too. So, yeah, I mean, the they, social, they're getting it. 
social media is key for these these teams and these leagues. It's key for the National Arena League as well. And to be competitive in this ever transforming landscape of spring football, to compete for these best players, to compete for a Mason Espinosa or a Jonathan Bain or Antoine Grant, Darius Prince, you have to broadcast your product. You have to present your product and say, hey, this is going, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And you also have to, unfortunately, pay up to get these players. If not, they will oh, ship to the USFL. They will go to the IFL or they will go to another league because, or the XFL because spring league is getting so popular now. Not what it was five years ago where it was only the AFL, its second iteration of the AFL, and that was it. Compared to right. The now, well, I'll tell you one thing that I'm still waiting on to see is uh, – the USFL doesn't hasn't announced a draft pool, so we don't know who all is in there. You know, we a lot of guys are not sharing. So that the speculation anyone is available really. And there's over three thousand players that put their name in. So, you know, you imagine oh, a good chunk of those so teams might be here. So, so you're telling me that we might see a Luis Perez, a Landry Jones reappear type well, of situation. You, well, Luis Perez, that's already. That's Garen. That's already been confirmed. Apparently. That is confirmed. Well, okay. Yeah. He is such the one of the most underrated <laughs> quarterbacks in freaking. Very versatile. Like, very versatile. Like that. He should be on an NFL roster. Just saying. Yeah, you know what? This might be the one. You know, I'm just. It could be the one. Just got to have a sustained it, full year. And the that, Birmingham Stallions better draft him because he was with the Birmingham Steel. So Iron. Stallions. Uh, yes. No, oh, Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham Steel. What's that's is iron. There, there arena team? iron. No, you're you're thinking the Steel Dogs. Steel Dog. Oh my. Yeah. 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 You're yeah, thinking the Steel mind. Dogs, my friend. <laughs> That's a little mind. different. Yeah. Now here. Okay. So if you want to now, if you're curious, those listening, you're like, okay, where? So where can we know when Antoine's getting drafted? You know, that that's the that's the big question. So day one, receivers are not going. It's the first twelve rounds. So there's no receivers being picked up day one, and that drafting period goes from 7 p.m. Eastern to 10. So that's day one. Day two, which you're going to be wanting to perk up for, you might be at work because it kicks off at 10 a.m. Eastern time on a Wednesday. And that essentially lasts until you get to all 35 rounds being picked up. So if you want to see if he gets picked up, then pay attention to your social media, which, by the way, they aren't broadcasting this. You're going to have to follow any of those teams to see if he gets picked up or Honestly, follow Antoine at uh, I believe it's at Twatch Greatness on Twitter. He'll or, most likely he'll most likely retreat. Or will plug course, in. I mean, what, USFL podcast will have a live there stream. You go. The thing is, though, we aren't gonna they we can't they're not gonna announce it on ours because that's only day one. We we um, I got I still got to work a normal job. Good good no, sir. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, 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 <laughs> I no. no. I did, I'm done. I, I'm done. That's it. That's it. I'm done. You know. I'm, I'm done. No, please <laughs> don't leave. I need a cause. Um, but yeah, I, re I recommend you pay attention again. This is just for other arena guys too. Like you'll see names pop up, you know, some that, like I said, have announced others. We have no clue. So sure. we're going to find out. I think the whole football community is going to be finding out who might not be there <laughs> come the end of this and week. And there's going to be names. You go, I totally forgot about that dude where he's, and he's not on the wrong, like, and he's nowhere to be found right now. And he pops up, you go, Oh, that's where he's been the whole time. Yeah, but like, like there's some people out there. We know a lot of players that they don't want share anything. They don't care, or their agents and, just don't want them doing it either. Course, you know, yeah. And that's a bargaining chip too. They just say, hey, keep quiet. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. But there's, I think there's going to be some. I think the first eight picks tomorrow, I'm going to say three of the three of the five, eight are surprises that no one knows. We'll find out. Yeah, I would. I, I would say at least for. Uh, I'd love to see like like I said, Patrick O'Brien at least repping for at least who's been confirmed out of this league. It'd be really cool to be like, yeah, I know who he is. And you know, what'll happen is if someone talks about him in a broadcast, they won't, they'll have to be like, no, they won't, they won't. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they I won't know bring up, yep. It's a problem. They don't bring it up. Like arena just doesn't get respect. So I'm like, boo, put in his arena experience. It's football. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's be fair. Well, if you go you to know. spring stock, ladies and gentlemen, that is opening weekend of the mm -hmm. USFL. You will be hearing myself, Zach, uh, the ref, at the tailgate. Yeah. Trust me. When we talk about players like Antoine Grant, me and Zach, it's like he used to play for the Columbus Lions, which is an arena league team. Yes. 
That's we don't hear a lot right. of arena. I know you guys here on the podcast know a lot about the arena. We do know, we do love you guys, love the support, but that irritates the heck out of me when they go, Oh yeah, he played, uh, he played for the his college, and they, well, then some players get their high schools. I'm like, he has like five year career in the arena league. I have felt like he just didn't leave college. And Put one some thing respect on that league, you know. And honestly, there was an interview I was watching behind the scenes of what Kurt Warner's movie. They interviewed Kurt Warner, and when he went to St. Louis, they asked him where was your playing career. One of the coaches, and he he mentioned, oh, the Iowa Barnstorms, and the and the head coach. I think it was either the quarterback coach. For the Rams was like, who who are they? Like they cared about his they cared about his career in college and where he came from. Completely ignore the Arena League and and yeah. and Kurt Warren's like, no, I the Arena League really helped me out. Yeah, I mean um, that that one. It's funny because like him, he was one of the guys that made it big and helped kind of Arena yeah. jump up to where it had more public viewership. So like it's funny now we're back into the stage of like niche sport. Maybe hope someday if we keep building this, we can get back to that stage. That's our job. This you is know, our that, job that, now. That's all you. This. Yeah. It's, it's like one back 10 years ago, Aaron Garcia. Yeah. Aaron's like, oh, who's that? Well, he's the only, I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, he is the only arena football quarterback to have his jersey retired in Canton, Ohio. That is pretty cool. Because and, he has yeah. like a, a hundred. Was it almost said one thousand touchdown passes, something mm-hmm. like that? I mean, we'll be. Uh, I was gonna say you talk about Springstock. Our plans also to be out there for that. I know USFL has been talked a lot already on the show. Oh, yeah. But trust me, we have the connection there for that. For why we're doing that, mm-hmm. but we're actually supposed to be out there for summer too. Or at least yeah. what I will. So also take a photo. We can, of that. We can basically say it. me and Zach will be on location for the NAL championship game. So Zach's going to be traveling a lot this year. We're going to be, he may be, he's going to be traveling to Jacksonville for the NAL championship. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going to go, go hang out with me. I'm going to show him oh, where to go at, here in Oh Jackson. my God. Did you just, <laughs> you're, you're predicting it? Oh, no, not really. Not really. I'm just, I'm just wrote because was, was, um, Mason was saying how I rep Jacksonville a lot. Yes. Sure. I am a non-biased reporter, but I will say that, um, Yes. There's one in six chance that you'll be will you be coming to Jacksonville for the NAL? Championship. You know, you never know, man. Uh, it is it's one in six. You're absolutely yeah. right. Again, and Columbus is year. drivable distance for me, and Carolina's drivable distance for me too. So. I mean, for those that have listened, not listened enough, I'm from Indianapolis. I won't like go to any Orlando, one of though. these, nope. oh. <laughs> don't go to Orlando. <laughs> no. Oh, no Amway. Oh, that's too bad. No, too bad. <laughs> it's too bad. Well, Jim, I think that's going to about do it for our show here. Um, Hour long. It's been a been a good one. Um, oh, yeah. Again, in fact, first video, man. I think that's 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 awesome. Like I said, I I cannot say enough how like so if you if you guys are watching the video right now, like I love this overlay. I really do, and we're going to be using it more. It's going to be great. I cannot wait to see what we do end of season one into season two and ahead, man. Oh, it's it's, awesome. it's an adventure, and I just want to say to the fans out there. It could be getting a lot, a lot better. Possible. It's possible. Coming up next week, we'll be having a chump, the mascot. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) Mascot rules say that'll be one of the most boring shows I've ever seen in, or sorry, that I'll ever listen to. Seeing it might be fun. Yeah. Chump, how are you doing? Spaz is out. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's a great opportunity and, Let's just tell – I'm going to tell you the fans out there who have downloaded our show now watching us live or here on YouTube is there are a lot of people in the background, just not us. We're we're working together to produce something great. And, and if we as a team get an opportunity to do it, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Me and, I think me and Zach have been like all week just jittery about what we're trying to do, what plans that we have, the goals that we have. <laughs> Um, and we decided to just launch our YouTube page now. Um, I'm still season two, season two. two. You'll see, you'll, you'll season two, which is in four weeks, maybe. Um, you will see the official studio of my collection I have. Um, not now, you're not gonna see it now, even though it's right over there. Oh, it's I'm coming, wrong. it's that way. Um, it's, it's over there. So, um, uh, I'm gonna say if, if people are just like, who's where's he pointing? Point to my left. I forget this is on podcast too. They're like, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> not I can't, Jim. No, I'm listening on a day. He's not used to the fangled moving pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's. No, I gotta get used to this now, but it's awesome. 
And I just want to say to the fans out there, last week's episode, I couldn't believe we got that name downloads. Uh, it's amazing that the support we have, and we appreciate it. Even the people out in Oregon. Don't yeah. know why you guys are listening to us, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, West Coast. You guys are now, right. now, now East Coast. Maybe we have to hashtag this, Zach. We need to hashtag Maine, Vermont, and Connecticut, and we got the whole East Coast to download everything. Just say something about UConn and go, hey, got it. Even though it's not, they downloaded the show and they said UConn's like, yeah, we got Connecticut. That's the only we thing. Need, that we need, that's what we need. David Pindell's got to be on then. We'll, we'll definitely get we'll definitely get that area. <laughs> False advertising. <laughs> Oh, we got one more goodie because it's the end of the show and you made this one too. I'm excited to show this. Jim, as we leave, remember one thing. Don't be a jack out of the box. Oh, it's so good. Yes. (laughs) I I love this. I love this. Folks, stay tuned. We're going to have more coming. Still bi-weekly shows, but soon enough, we'll be back on that weekly rotation. Until next time, everybody, have a good one.